Hey, good morning, it's Owen Bigland. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Let's talk about buying a foreclosure or a quarter ordered sale in British Columbia. Now, uh, I get quite a few calls about this and emails people asking me about buying a foreclosed property. Is there a good deal to be had out there? Well, foreclosures in BC work a little bit different than what they do in the US. Uh, if you watch a lot of these reality shows uh, on HGTV, there's a, a few of them where they go out and people buy these foreclosed properties at pennies on the dollar, fix them up and, and flip them for big profit. Um, be nice if everything worked out that's clean and simple as they do on some of these reality shows. But um, I handle foreclosures in BC with the bank's major lending institutions being my clients. Um, they call me up and say, oh, we've got a property in Vancouver or Richmond uh, and uh, we need you to sell, market it and sell. So I'll go out, uh, do a, 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 a market analysis on the, on the unit uh, and come up with a, uh, with a price for it. Uh, they'll also, the banks will also do their own appraisal to see what they think the property is at from a third party appraiser. So we'll come up with a list price. We list the property and away we go. Now, unlike in the US, uh, I'm not allowed to disclose publicly that this unit or this home is a foreclosure or a court ordered sale. Um, I can't put that on any of my marketing material, on my website, on my flyers, nothing. Now I can disclose that to the potential buyer in person and I'll also disclose it on the Realtor MLS, not the public MLS but the one that's for Realtors. I will put in the Realtors remarks that it is a court ordered sale and that a Schedule A is required. What is a Schedule A? A Schedule A is a one uh, or two page document that uh, removes many of the standard uh, clauses in the contract of purchase and sale. To keep it simple, essentially what it is, is it's a as is, where is sale, or what we call buying it as is, where is. So it removes any guarantees on the unit. So it's up to the buyer and to do his own due diligence before he puts an offer in, and, uh, and writes an offer on the, on the unit. So um, uh, the reason for that is simple. The bank knows nothing about the home. They've never lived in it. They know nothing about the strata, if it's a strata complex. So you have to do your own due diligence. Uh, there's no warranties on it whatsoever. So after that though, writing an offer on a bank uh, quarter ordered sale or foreclosure is exactly the same as writing an offer on any other property. You can have all your regular subject clauses in there. The only difference is, is they all have to be removed before we set a court date. Uh, the only clause remaining is subject to court approval. So you can write in subject to getting all the strata documents, uh, in, any engineering reports, any depreciation reports, you can have subject to getting a home inspection, uh, subject to financing, just like any other sale. Give you seven, ten days, whatever you need to remove those subject. So once you've got all the materials, you've got the home inspection, and you still feel good about the sale, you can remove subjects and we're on to phase two. So phase two is I would submit the, uh, the accepted offer to the lawyer representing the bank. They'll do some paperwork, it'll take a couple of days and we'll set a court date. That court date is gonna be anywhere between three weeks to six weeks down the road at the courthouse down on Smythe Street. They meet twice a week in the mornings. Now, this is where it gets a little different. Once we've got an accepted offer and a court date set, I am required from my client, the bank, to fully market that property. I've still got to advertise it, still have open houses on it, uh, showings, everything. Uh, but here's where it gets tricky. Once we've got an accepted offer and a court date, now I can disclose, first off, the court date, of course, when it's going to court for court approval, and the accepted offer that's going into court. So the, any potential buyers from here on in will know what the accepted offer was. And this is to stimulate more offers coming in into a competition into court. And anyone can still put an offer on it while we're waiting for the court date. They can still do all their own due diligence on it, do an inspection, get all the strata documents. And then on the day of the court, they can show up with a, with a uh, completed uh, co uh, contract of purchase and sale. And their asking and their and their price. It has to be a subject-free offer when you bring it into court. The only subject being that it's subject to court approval, and you put it uh, meet at the courthouse at 10 a.m. and in a sealed envelope. Now, what will happen is uh, I'll meet up with the lawyer at about quarter to 10. At 10 o'clock, we'll make an announcement. Is there anybody here for 288 Smith Street? Uh, if there is, sometimes there's one, two, three parties. Sometimes there's none. Uh, I would say, based on my experience over the last couple of years in the uh, in court, 
uh, I would say 80% of the offers that go to court are uncontested. They have no other competing offers in court. 20% you'll have other bidders in court. Now, it gets kind of interesting when you get multiple bidders here. You turn up at 10 a.m. and let's say you've got two more bidders that have got offers in a sealed envelope with their realtors there. Um, of course now the original accepted offer that took it to court, he already knows now that he's outbid because we've disclosed his accepted, his accepted offer. So he can then, if he wants, if he wants to still, is he still interested in the, in the uh, home, he can then revise his offer uh, and scratch out his original price and put in a new higher price. So you can see how this goes. Um, I've seen people revise bids several times before it actually gets called into court. Um, if there's two people, you know, you might go in with your first bid. If there's seven or eight other bidders, and if you really like the property, you might want to uh, up it even more because you know you're in pretty heavy competition. So I've seen units over the years that go into court uncontested and sell at a pretty good price, a uh, pretty good deal for the buyer. Um, I've also seen uh, product or homes that uh, get into court uh, and they've got eight or nine competing bids waiting on court date in sealed envelopes. By the time uh, the judge opens all the envelopes and looks at the prices, in my opinion, that unit is sold uh, for every bit of market value and maybe then some. Sometimes people get caught up in the frenzy of bidding and uh, it can really push the price of that, uh, that home even above what I think market value would be. So that's the wild world of foreclosures. Um, again, the public doesn't have access to it on the MLS. Um, if you phone a realtor, he can look up and, uh, and give you a list of the foreclosed properties uh, in the lower mainland. I just looked right now in Vancouver and Richmond right now, there's currently 19 properties listed as foreclosures. Uh, in Vancouver and Richmond. Uh, most of them, the vast majority of them, are usually uh, condos or townhomes. You get the odd house in there, but they're usually stratified. In a nutshell, that's foreclosures. You can always reach me if you've got any other questions on it. There's a lot more to it than that, but uh, you can always drop me an email at owen at owenbigland.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.